See, I think this event uh, is very useful for a variety of uh, healthcare providers, the clinical treatment givers, the administrators, those who are into e-health, e-governance. Uh, this uh, gives a forum where uh, everyone can meet, exchange ideas and actually take home something which will help in day-to-day -day improvement of services because uh, the ultimate objective of uh, any hospital or any healthcare provider is to help the patient get better treatment, for the patient to get targeted therapy, correct diagnosis and also at the lowest cost. So, I think this kind of interaction is very useful in achieving those ends. See, uh, to some extent what you say is true, but there is no replacing the man on the ground. You know, of course, for underprivileged, underdeprived de areas where these facilities are not there, probably through the satellite links, uh, through telemedicine, teleradiology, telepathology, we will be able to give access because problem today is of access. Patients have to travel hundreds of miles just to get a diagnosis or to get a specific treatment. With this, probably a, a task force on the ground in a remote area who may not be the best in the world may be able to enhance their capabilities with inputs given remotely and be able to help and treat people at the local level itself and only those who have serious ailments then need to come to major centers for treatment. What is ICT? <clears throat> okay. See, uh, I, can, I can tell you very specifically about uh, radiology, where we are using teleradiology on a daily basis. In fact, within the country, from centers where there are CT scans and MRIs which are installed, but you don't have skilled radiologists there, someone who does ultrasound, but also has installed a CT, uh, but doesn't have the confidence of reporting it or the time because he's so busy doing other things. <coughs> we are helping him uh, through teleradiology. Also, there is this initiative where in specialized centers, you have subspecialists of different fields of radiology. Say someone who does just neuroradiology or someone who does musculoskeletal radiology, these subspecialists are definitely better than the general radiologist at reading scans. And so they can be used for second opinions or for correcting the diagnosis uh, as the case may be. Thirdly, it is also being used for as a teaching tool where through the, this medium, you can actually, for people who may not be able to attend a conference, they can see it online or even see it later and learn from that. So I think uh, the, the, there is great advantage as things exist today. And I feel that, you know, in our states of India, we have a healthcare infrastructure that's in place. It may not be working very well now. It may not be providing the kind of uh, care that patients need. There may not be adequately trained staff there. And through this telemedicine, we can actually attempt to bridge that gap. And, and uh, you know, we may even, there is already talk of, uh, you know, the village doctors. There is talk also in uh, uh, radiology circles of the super technologist someone who can you know do something more than a routine technologist but lesser than a radiologist and and i think in the coming years as the manpower crunch the trained skilled manpower in both radiology 
uh, and even uh, different facets of medicine, as that uh, uh, decreases, uh, I think we will have to address all these issues very, very seriously. See, there's nothing without challenges, but the fact is, with the explosive growth of the healthcare industry, newer hospitals coming, newer healthcare facilities, newer radiology centers, newer pathology centers, there is definitely going to be shortage of skilled radiologists, med medicine men, as well as pathologists. So it is inevitable, whether we like it or not, that telemedicine and tele-radiology, telepathology will play a role. We have no choice because till the country doesn't produce enough numbers of specialists so as to be able to address the need and already we are seeing the shortage. Also, as really skilled manpower, really, you know, sub-speciality radiologists, uh, uh, it's going to take years to develop them. And so, 10 years down the line, definitely. I think uh, this remote diagnosis and treatment through your medium is going to be playing um, a, a, a very important role. And we have to accept it and we have to work together so as to refine it. So that, I mean, as a clinician, as a radiologist, I can tell you, my contact with my patient is of utmost importance to me. That also, enhances my diagnostic capability when I can speak to the patient, when I can talk to his referring physician. So we have to design programs, design software in such a way that that interaction also is sustained and we don't lose sight of because we don't want to make doctors as a commodity which can be traded on the stock market. We want real life human beings and, and I'm sure with the software industry the way it is, there are many companies, Indian companies which are into teleradiology, telemedicine and I think bringing in this nearness and this contact with the patient even from a remote distance through the cameras, internet, ISRO, lease line, uh, uh, you know, where the government is willing to give you time for free, I, I think it can that that gap can also be bridged thank you thanks a lot